Hello and welcome to Retro Cards Game and Pickups and this is going to be a big one. Loads of stuff was picked up over the Christmas period and not only just for me but for you guys too. And we're going to be taking a look at all the stuff that you guys have sent over or your pictures I should say at the end of the video. But first let me show you the stuff that uh, I managed to get over the last uh, couple of weeks over the Christmas period. Okay so first of all we have this big thing here. I'm sure you know what this is. You've probably seen my video of it. This is the Sega Astro City Mini Arcade Machine. Fully micro switch joystick, buttons, nice screen, and yes, a whole unit here. Originally, it only comes with this top section, but I went and bought the whole hog and got the bottom base as well, which can also be doubled up as a money box. It's a little uh, compartment here which you can undo and uh, take out your money. And basically, the idea is, is to play the arcade games you put in 100 yen and you put your 100 yen in the coin slot here and uh, you play your game. Of course it doesn't insert a credit, you've got to press the credit by pressing the button up here. But what I'm planning to do is get myself one of those cylinders type uh, of rechargeable lithium ion batteries, stick it in here and have a cable coming out of the back, I'm going to drill a little hole in the back and connect straight to the power socket. So this will become a true portable. So yeah, keep an eye open for the future video on that. All right, so apart from this, we've got a lot of PlayStation stuff. And uh, I'm gonna start off with PlayStation 4 stuff. Um, so the first thing I got, uh, this has been on order for a long time. This is the Alesta collection, or Alist collection, as sometimes it's known in English. And this features all the Game Gear games, plus the Sega Master System games. And one brand new Game Gear game that was made in 2020. That's a Leicester uh, GG3. Now, I'm a little bit upset that this uh, collection did not come with uh, all the Leicester games on, such as uh, the Mega Drive games and uh, Super Leicester, or known as Space Mega Force in the West. So that is a bit of a shame. It just seems to be a bit of an 8-bit uh, collection. So, a bit of a shame about that. But it did come with this lovely booklet. And this is kind of a in homage to the old style um, game magazines that used to get released in Japan. And even on the back, there's an advertisement for uh, GG Alista 3. So that's pretty cool. I do like that. And the inside's pretty good. It goes into uh, the development of the games and also the new game as well. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so just put that down there. And next up on the PlayStation 4 is Fighting X Layer. And this is a PlayStation 4 beam up that I have not even opened yet. It's made by Akira, I think it's Akira, is it? Or oh, Arika, sorry, Akira, Arika, which is an offshoot of Capcom. Um, they were responsible for the original original 3D uh, Street Fighter games, the uh, EX series. So I've not played this, and the only reason I have it is because it was really cheap on Amazon Japan. Um, I think they were doing it for 1,300 yen, brand new. Um, so yeah, this is still factory sealed. It is a bit of an old game. It came out uh, two years ago in uh, 2018. But yeah, at that price, can't pass it up. And I hope to uh, be having a game of it sometime soon. All right. Keeping with the new stuff, uh, we've got some Xbox Series X games or Xbox One X games, which happen to run on a Series X. Well, all, all of them will actually. We got Devil's May Cry 5. Now, again, I bought this thinking it would have been the uh, Series X version. That's all bloody confusing, you know? Um, apparently, the Series X version is a whole different game. It's not this one. This is the regular Xbox One or Xbox One X version. So it's missing some of the uh, extra features, such as the uh, super high frame rates and the, um, what's it called, uh, the ray tracing or whatever. But yeah, it's an okay game. I'm not really a big fan of it, to be honest. Um, I played quite a bit of it, but I got no desire to go back and finish it anytime soon. I just don't really care much for uh, the Devil's May Cry series. But that's not to say it's a bad game. But one game that I have been playing a lot on the Series X is this. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I've been playing so much of this that I've actually completed the game. Yes, 80, I think it's about 82 hours I've put into this and I've completed all the missions, all the uh, gigs, all the uh, uh, Night City Police Department um, jobs, everything. It's all done. It's completed. 
Um, there's just a few more achievements to get, such as uh, knocking off three people with uh, one shot or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, absolutely love this game, can recommend it. Yes, it is buggy as hell, and if you're playing it on uh, last gen machines, then it's not really worth bothering playing with it because it runs really badly on those machines. But if you've got a next gen machine or a super spec'd up PC, give it a try. This is a one awesome, awesome game. Very, very good. All right. So that's it for the uh, new stuff. Let's, uh, let's just put this down here. Okay. And uh, let's move on to the retro stuff. Okay, so a lot of retro stuff uh, came in over the last couple of weeks, starting off with PC Engine. Now, uh, fans of the channel will know that I've done the, uh, what we call it, the trilogy of uh, the Ballast games. I know there's about four and Ballast X, but I like to think of it as a trilogy. And uh, I just happened to have picked up the uh, PC Engine games again uh, for that trilogy, and here they are. So yeah, I wasn't using ISOs off the internet. Um, although I did use the American ISO for uh, Ballast 1 on the PC Engine, because for some reason, this, the disc wouldn't work, but uh, it does now. Very, very weird. Anyway, here we go. That's uh, Valus 1 for PC Engine. We've got that. And we've also got Valus 2 on the PC Engine. Yeah. And we've got Valus 3 also on the PC Engine. All right. So there we have it. So just uh, for completion's sake, uh, let's see, Valus 2 and Valus 3 are CD-ROM-ROM -ROM games, so that's the just regular CD-ROM games. And Valus 1 is a super CD-ROM game. All right, which is why it looks better, and it did come out after those two. So there's those three. And the rest of the stuff is all PlayStation, so let's take a look at that. Oh, there's a big mountain over here. Here we go. Okay. So a lot of the stuff I've been collecting on PlayStation recently is uh, 3D beat-em-ups. I don't know why, but I'm just in this kind of mood these days to check out all the old crusty 3D beat-em-ups uh, on the PlayStation. You know, ones which were, uh, were not made by um, Namco, so you know, no Soul Calibers, no Tekkens. The more uh, lower level ones, but there are some very good ones. Um, this first one's not exactly very good, but it's not too bad. This is a Blue Breaker Burst, and this is a, a series which was made by Human and quite popular in Japan. It's got an RPG on the Sega Saturn, and I think there's an updated version of this 3D beat-em-up as well. It's a pretty decent game, it looks okay. It controls pretty well, and this comes with um, a CD single, so that's nice to have. So we'll put that over here. Okay, next up, we've got the Toshinden series of games. Now, you may think that there's only three Toshinden games, but you'd be quite wrong. There's actually a lot. Uh, there's even a puzzle uh, to game built uh, based upon Toshinden. But there are actually five beat-em-ups based on Toshinden for the PlayStation. And here they all are. So we've got the original Toshinden. Awful game, but it's nostalgic, so it's worth having. Then we have Toshinden 2. This is the plus version. Uh, what's the difference between the original version? Well, you'll have to wait for an upcoming video to find that out. But this was only re released as uh, one of the white labels, uh, the PlayStation Best series. Sorry, white labels to Sega Saturn, isn't it? All right, and then we have Toshinden 3. Yes, Toshinden 3 was a thing. And to be honest, this has an awfully bad and laughable 60 frames per second mode. Um, as I said, we'll get into that in a future video. It is actually quite a joke, to be honest, because uh, this came out the same time as Toshinden URL and uh, Sega Saturn, which is uh, 60 frames per second as well, and that looks a lot better than this, and a higher frame rate, and a, sorry, not high frame rate, a higher resolution as well, but uh, you'll see in the future. And then we have Toshinden Subaru. Yes, this was the... Uh, Final Toshi in the game to be released on the PlayStation, and it's complete and utter garbage. It's like they took a step back. I mean, none of the Toshi in the games are exactly amazing, but this is pretty bad. Yes. And, you know, Sega brought out Virtua Fighter Kids. Well, it seems uh, Tamsoft, uh, who made the Toshi in the series, 
they want to get in on the action too and they released this. Now this is a uh, Nin Toshinden. Yeah. This is kind of like a Virtua Fighter Kids version of Toshinden, but a little bit different because it plays uh, in a different style and it kind of has a bit of a weird graphical twist where everything's bending all over the place. Um, again, I'll show you this in a future video. I have a video series planned to highlight all the Toshinden games, except that Wii version, because that's basically nothing to do with the Toshinden series. All right, so that's those games. Let's put them down there. Continuing on with, with the 3D beat em ups, we have Lanma Half. Now, Lanma Half is surprisingly a very, very good 3D beat em up for the PlayStation. In fact, uh, the original Lanma Half beat em ups were all on the Super Famicom. There was three on that. Um, yeah, they were reasonable. Our first one ran in the high resolution mode as well. But this is also quite an interesting game. and. I think the only fault with it is that it is too difficult. It is very tricky to get into, especially for new players. But once you learn the moves, it has a lot of replay value. I do like this one, surprisingly good. Let's uh, keep with the 3D beat em ups. Here we go, we've got a few more here. Okay, next is uh, Shadow Struggle. We'll go with this one. Now, Sh Shadow Struggle is one of uh, I think four beat-em-ups made by the company uh, what's the what's the company called Radion or something Radian um, I can't remember the name of the company now is it written on the box anywhere but yeah again uh, it's a company that I plan on making a video about in the future but they made uh, quite a few uh, beat-em-ups for the PlayStation in 3D and they are actually good uh, this was one of the earlier ones and it's reasonable, it's fast, it plays well, it looks good. Um, uh, it's a shame because I don't think it's sold too well. In fact, having the Bam Presto logo on there does not help it out at all, uh, since Bam Presto are not exactly known for uh, quality products. But yeah, Shadow Struggle. Check it out if you can. It's very, very, very cheap and it is a good game. All right, and also made by the same company as Shadow Struggle is Heaven's Gate. Now you may actually know Heaven's Gate. It was released by Atlas, so it did get a lot more exposure than that game down there. And again, it's a very good 3D beat mob. And this one has a unique uh, feature to it, where all the stages actually have a ceiling on them, where you can bounce your opponent on and off the ceiling. Very nice feature. And you can also do ring outs or fix it so there is no ring outs. So there's a lot of different play mechanics to this. And again, it's a very good 3D beat mob that a lot of people just kind of overlooked and um, I mean it was more popular than the previous release but still didn't get the recognition it, it deserves it's definitely up there with some of the best so check it out if you can unfortunately Heaven's Gate does go for quite a pretty penny these days all right so I think that's it for the 3d beam ups for now um, next up we have Speedy Gun from From Software this is a typical roaming 3D adventure game and to be honest, looks quite ugly. Typical bendy PlayStation, dark, muddy texture, 3D style adventure game. Not really a fan of it and the, the tank controls are horrible, but there you go. From software. I thought it would be better being from, from software, but it isn't. Oh, my mistake. I thought that was the end of the 3D fighters, but no, we've got Ergeiser. I think that's how it's pronounced. What's it say in Japanese? Ergaitsu. All right, well, that's how it's pronounced in Japanese. Ergaitsu. Okay, um, I guess that's the closer pronunciation than the English version. This is an excellent 3D beat em up with an RPG mode by Square. And I'm sure you've heard about this. I don't know if it got a release in the West, but uh, it definitely is very, very common here in Japan and extremely cheap. So, yeah, there's that one. Great beat em up. Definitely worth checking out. All right, so on to Konami, and we've got Gambare Goemon. Which one is this? This is a uh, Gambare Goemon Kuru Narakoi. <laughs> it's one mouthful to say, especially uh, for a non-native Japanese speaker. So you know the deal with these games. It's a 3D adventure game uh, with lots of lovely platforming sections. There are two uh, Goemon games on the PlayStation, as far as I'm aware, and this is the later of the two. 
a good game worth checking out if you're a fan of the series. Okay, next up we've got Horned Owl. Now this is an interesting one. This is a 3D light gun game, but instead of using polygons for the main characters or the main enemies, it uses sprites. It's quite an interesting uh, title actually, and um, one of the earlier PlayStation games, uh, hence it comes in this weird looking box, which uh, I believe uh, all European PlayStation games came in. But um, in Japan, they uh, only used these for the first uh, series of games or the maybe the second generation up to that. And then, then they just switched to normal CD cases, which I'm glad because these things are horrible, very flimsy. And we'll finish up with a true first generation PlayStation game. And a real crappy game at that. Um, so yeah, when the PlayStation originally launched, there wasn't a lot on it. There was a Ridge Racer, a Cosmic, uh, what's it called? Cosmic Race, which I own. Bloody awful 3D racing game. Uh, if you can call it a racing game, um, with weird, weird controls where the L and R triggers stare the car. It's been years since I played it, but I, I remember it's awful. And there was also this as well. This is Cram Crackers. A very, very basic uh, 3D um, dungeon shoot 'em up, I guess you could call it. Um, one of the main flaws with this game is the fact that you cannot move, uh, you know, move around the area while shooting because the way you shoot enemies is you bring up a, a radical and you point that across the screen using the D pad. But the thing is, to move across the screen, you also use the D pad, so Either you move, or you move the radical to shoot the enemies. Real stupid idea for gameplay, but to be fair, it was one of the early uh, 3D games. And as you can see, this one still has its stickers in the box. Very, very nice. So there you have it, they are my game and pickups. Quite a lot of old school PlayStation games there. No Sega this time round, bit of a shame, but some good stuff nonetheless. Anyway, how about you guys? What have you guys been picking up? Well, judging by the pictures you've sent me, it seems some of you have had a very, very good Christmas time and received a lot of nice presents or bought stuff yourself. Anyway, let's take a look at your game and pickups. And if you wanna send your game and pickups to the show to be featured at the end, just jot them down in an email and send them to this address down here. All right. Till next time, guys, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya.